I must have driven past this, I think, a hundred times. I've never really noticed it. It's tucked away in this North Yorkshire countryside. And this is Cundall Church. And this is the other side. Unfortunately, the church isn't open, but uh, there have been so many thefts from these churches that uh, I'm not surprised at all. They're quite right. It's a, a reflection of today's society, unfortunately. The largest grave in the churchyard is this one of uh, the Furness family. And there are three in here. Uh, the first, obviously, Stephen Wilson Furness, who was the first baronet. He was born the 26th of May, 1872, and he died in 1914, uh, September, just after the end of the First World War. And, uh, as you can see, the churchyard is pretty unkept. Uh, in many ways, it's... Uh, <laughs> I like it. Um, but uh, it shows that very shortly after your death, you're completely forgotten. There's no sound anywhere. And across the fields there is Cundall Hall, alongside the, uh, the River Swale, where there is fishing, day ticket fishing. And uh, I'm reliably informed that the all of the day ticket money for the, from the fishing uh, goes to the upkeep of this church behind me. Which is nice to know. Whether it will continue under any future incumbents, we'll just have to wait and see. There's a war grave here. So this chap, A.J. Wilson, from the Royal Northumberland Fusiliers, who was killed. 4th of June 1940. It wasn't very long after the Second World War started. Tragic. Amongst the ragworts and long grass and hogweed and and thistles. And I wonder who this chap was. Jonathan Aidan Harrison Smith died very young. Unconventional, unforgettable, and loved by everyone, including a lot of snails. He sounds a very interesting person. There's a large stone wall right round the churchyard. But at this point, it's all falling in into disrepair. Perhaps we should fish a lot more. <laughs> so that there's sufficient money to, re to get this job done. It's obviously been like this for a considerable time. There's some of the oyster catches in the background. All the rubbles tucked away behind this little fence through which they're growing. <laughs> Nettles and thistles. That's a shame, really. Because if it doesn't get done, it, uh, the, it, the wall will just deteriorate even further. But I can imagine it's, be, it's an expensive business. 
although you won't have to pay for any materials. There's a seat here to the Willises. Very kind of them. And you can sit there and stare at the church and contemplate. It's just that kind of place, it's a sort of place for contemplation. Yeah. Try and find your place in the world. <laughs> or the meaning of life, or why are we here? All those kind of things that might cross your mind when, when you're sitting here. And here, isolated on its own against the wall, This gravestone with a little cross on top. Nobody's been in it for years. And yet underneath there are all these plastic flowers, as if somebody was here yesterday. Some caring individual. I'm not a big fan of plastic flowers. Uh, far better to bring, if you're coming, to bring a nice little bunch of living flowers, even flowers you may have picked in the fields and put them there. I know they'll shrivel and die in a few days, but uh, they're a bit of a country, really, plastic flowers. And there are a fair number in this churchyard. Even the clock has stopped at 20 past five. I wonder if it chimed. I wonder when the last five o'clock was when it chimed, what date? How long has it been stopped? How long has it been silenced? Who knows? Anyway, time standing still here. It looks like it's been standing still for a long time. And here at this end you can see the, uh, the structure of the wall. And where it's been repaired. You should always see a repair here, you can see it much better. Rounded pebbles from the river, sort of dressed more square stones every other course of, and then on the top, these uh, I assume was sandstone. On well, the sandstone on this side, that's quite definitely sandstone. But on the other side of the church, they're white, obviously limestone of some description. But, uh, yeah. Another imposing grave is this one to the Collins family. I have no idea who they were, who they are. But this one, Sir Arthur James Robert Collins, KCVL, who died in December 2000. And this one in memory of William Fellows Collins, Wild Scots Greys, died the 10th of February 1918, is that? And of, and of Lady Evelyn Annie Collins, OBE. But who were these people? Who were <laughs> William Fellows Collins of the Royal Scots Greys and the other chap? Oh. Nevertheless, despite their obvious wealth and uh, imposing grave and weeds everywhere,
and working their way through what is a plastic underlay designed to stop them without any great success. So large areas of the churchyard appear to be unused. Most of the graves are on the east and south sides. But there are some new graves over there. This is the latest grave, 2019. Obviously the family care for it still. And uh, real flowers on there. Lovely. And then there are these other graves. 2010 or well, thereabouts just overgrown with rank grass yeah how quickly people forget <laughs> I mean who were these people what did they do yeah. what did they contribute during their lives we'll never know Interesting one. William, William Henry Milnthorpe, grandson of Lord Justice Matthews. I wonder who he was, this Lord Justice Matthews. So that's a little group of the more modern graves. There are one or two on the other side of the church, but this is where the most of the modern, I say, more recent burials have taken place. I mean, today most people are cremated, so. Uh, burials are very much out of, or falling out of favour. Ways of this very fine grass. These sort of pinkish brownish seed heads. And there's a fair amount of it. And there's a surprising lack of flowers, natural flowers. Ragwort seems to be the only thing <laughs> I can see. Well, it's a lovely place. Everything you imagine about an English country church, an English country churchyard, unkempt. Famous people, long forgotten. <laughs> Others soon to be forgotten. War grave. But uh, if you had to choose a spot <laughs> to spend eternity, uh, you couldn't go far wrong with a place like this. I wonder if. Uh, the poet Gray sat on a, a bench in a churchyard like this when he wrote his elegy. It's just a kind of place. Anyway, it's now going on half past three. Time perhaps to find somewhere to fish. Yeah, maybe make a contribution to the upkeep of this church. How much five quid contributes, I've no idea. Probably two or three ticks <laughs> at a clock, and that'll be it. That silence is just amazing. And there it is, with the sun on it. The churchyard is just, apart from the verges up to the door, it's just a wilderness. Which I think is nice than a, a manicured country churchyard. Which is nice to have for people wandering around perhaps to just mow, mow a few footpaths. But uh, I think country churchyards are meant to be wildernesses. And this footpath leads across the fields to Cundall village. 
in the old days when they were all tied cottages. They'd all have to make their way along here, probably twice on Sundays. All the people who worked on the estate, worked in the big house, worked on the land. It was, uh, whether you liked it or not, church attendance was compulsory. I mean, you can tell that this has been here for a long, long time. Maybe that's not the original building. It's been renovated, probably in Victorian times. Look at the size of these trees around here. Yeah. This drive between the vicarage at the top there. Huge beech trees and oak trees. I mean, that is just a magnificent thing. It must be at least two, three hundred years old, if not more. I wonder how many visitors it gets every year. Not very many, I shouldn't think. The church was built by this fellow, William Heathcote. One of the many Heathcots. Uh, he married somebody there with a rather fancy name. From uh, Villa Mayor. And she died at Neuilly in 1865. So, uh, a long time before him. Anyway, he left no children, and uh, as it says, he became insane before his death. And the estate was taken over by the government, Her Majesty's Treasury. But after that, it fell into the hands of the Furness family, um, sort of ship owners and merchants from Hartlepool. And uh, following that, them. Uh, Seemingly, some of the family called Collins took it on. And I think after that, it, uh, the actual manor house became a school, Cundall Manor, which is still which is still going. I think it became a school just after the Second World War. And yeah, he was the man who built the church. It was on the site of a, a, an older church. Um, and seemingly there's nothing very architecturally significant about it. But it is in a nice place. <laughs>